Hello again, my fellow pilots and aircraft maintenance personnel. Your host is always Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Welcome to my aviation nuggets for today. Today we'll speak about two phenomena that may affect the brake unit. Two phenomena that may affect the brake unit. Brake wear and brake oxidation. Brake wear and brake oxidation. You know that all of us before uh, aircraft dispatch, during walk around, we check the brake wear indicator. And if the brake wear indicator is beyond the limit, we change the brake unit. Brake wear may happen due to brake application and due to temperature. So all of us may know well about or regarding brake wear. But today I need to spot on brake oxidation, brake oxidation. It is other phenomena. It is another phenomena that may affect or may harm the brake unit. And also you as a pilot or as a maintenance personnel, if you uh, found a brake heavily oxidized, you need to change the brake unit as fast as you can. Because if the brake is oxidized heavily, it can easily fracture or rupture. And you can suffer from, and the aircraft can suffer from a brake fire and the hydraulic leakage and an uncontaminated failure from the brake unit. You know that the brake unit is a set of rotor and stator. Rotor and stator. And the brake unit has some pistons that apply on the stator to stop the aircraft and to convert the kinetic energy into heat energy. So the brake unit is called a brake sink. A brake sink. Yes. Or a heat sink. I'm sorry. A heat sink because it converts the kinetic energy into uh, heat energy and absorb it by the brake unit. So you remember that or you know that, that the brake unit must have a sufficient strength and a sufficient mass to absorb the heat energy that may be converted from the kinetic energy. And the brake unit must be available during heavy uh, uh, heavy brake like in in case of rejected takeoff in that case very high temperature must be absorbed and very uh, high temperature must be absorbed by the brake unit rotor and stator okay so you need to clearly identify what is the difference between wear and oxidation and you need to know that both are harmful effects that happen to the brake unit. And if you ever noticed a brake wear beyond limit or brake heavily oxidized, you need to change the brake unit. You need to change the brake unit as fast as you can. Okay, everybody, let's proceed. Brakes are subject to two, two different phenomena. You need to know that. Brake units are subject to two different phenomena. Both are harmful phenomena, wear and oxidation. Wear and oxidation. So what do you think about uh, uh, the uh, conditions that increase wear and conditions that increase oxidation? Wear is the phenomena that the width of the brake disc are becoming uh, are becoming less than the normal. So the width become less. The width is reduced. And the mass of the brake unit is reduced. So that the strength of the brake unit is reduced. Okay, oxidation also. Oxidation also. It is a phenomenon that the carbon uh, reacts with oxygen in the air carbon in the carbon multi-disc brake will react in the oxygen in the air so that the carbon will become like powder like ashes and the brake will heavily loss its strength and its mass and cannot absorb the required heat you know that the brake unit is called a heat sink because it will absorb the heat that's converted from 
uh, the kinetic energy into heat energy and absorb it by the carbon multi-disc break. Okay, everybody. So, break wear is the progressive loss of weight on the break disc due to friction. You know that there is a set of stator and rotor, stator and rotor in the brake unit. And during brake application, there uh, a heavy friction happen between the stator and rotor to stop the aircraft and to convert the kinetic energy into heat energy. So, brake wear is the progressive loss of weights on the brake disc. If the brake unit is a new unit, okay, so the weights will be bigger or higher weights. But due to friction and due to brake application with time, this weight is becoming less and less. And you can monitor the loss of weights of the brake unit by monitor the brake wear indicator on the brake unit. And if this wear indicator is becoming beyond limit, you need to take action as a pilot or as an aircraft maintenance personnel to change the brake unit, to change the brake unit. Okay, so brake application, brake friction, take us to brake wear, brake application, temperature also, and the brake friction, friction between the rotor and stator, take us to the phenomena of brake wear. And you as a pilot or as an aircraft maintenance personnel, you need to check always the brake wear indicator to see if it is in good limit or beyond limit. If it is reach the limit and there is no protruding from the brake wear indicator, protruding part, so you need to take action and change the brake unit. Change the brake unit. Okay, everybody. So as you can see here from this slide, brake wear, on carbon brakes depend on the number of brake application and on the brake temperature. Number of brake application and on the brake temperature. This two uh, acts or this two phenomena increase the brake wear and with time you need to change the brake due to brake wear. Okay, everybody. Let's proceed for the next slide. So, brake wear, if we need to identify this phenomena, each carbon brake type has its own temperature range for optimum operation and its temperature range for maximum wear, for maximum wear. So, temperature also affects the brake wear rate, the brake wear rate. And after landing and after apply brake, the temperature of the brake unit is increase so that pilots and aircraft maintenance people need to check about the temperature normal range of temperature of the brake unit before next departure and you need to check that the brake temperature is going down to the normal range before the next takeoff as if the aircraft need in the next takeoff or suffer from a rejected takeoff the brake unit must be Prepare to absorb the high temperature that uh, uh, come from the rejected takeoff. So the temperature range varies from one brake manufacturer to another. Each brake unit has its own temperature range that the pilot and the aircraft maintenance people before the next takeoff need to assure that the brake unit temperature going down to be ready for the next takeoff. As in a bad circumstance, the pilots do a rejected takeoff. In that case, we need the maximum performance from the, from the brake unit. From the brake unit. Okay, everybody. So again, temperature limitation is play a big role to uh, affect the brake wear. To affect the brake wear. Okay, everybody. Next slide. So, guaranteed, you need to always remember that guaranteed braking efficiency until the wear limit. As I told you, this is the brake unit. Brake unit consists of a set of rotor and stator. The gray part is the stator, and the first one is called the pressure plate. 
So all the gray part is a set of stators. And all the uh, blue part is a set of rotors. Okay? And we have pistons coming uh, uh, f uh, from the hydraulic system. Pistons powered by the hydraulic system apply pressure to allow the stator and rotor to uh, touch each, each other and do a friction and stop the aircraft, stop the aircraft. Okay, everybody. You know that each brake unit may be supplied by two different hydraulic system. Normal hydraulic system and alternate hydraulic system to provide normal brake and alternate brake. For example, in the Airbus, some aircraft have uh, 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 brake unit that's supplied by green system and yellow system. Green system for normal brake and yellow system for alternate brake. Okay, everybody. So your job as an aircraft maintenance personnel and you as a pilot during walk around, you need to check about the brake wheel. And you need to check that this brake wheel is above limit and protrude from the reference disc. So as if it is protruding, brake wheel indicator is protruding. So now you are satisfied that the mass and the uh, uh, mass and the strength of the brake unit is good and the guaranteed braking efficiency will be available if uh, we suffer from a rejected takeoff rejected takeoff so this is a picture to a serviceable brake and why it is serviceable because the brake wheel indicator is above limit okay and it is protrude so we have sufficient friction will be available if for example a rejected takeoff is needed okay everybody next slide so brakes you need to remember always that brakes are guaranteed to provide sufficient braking until the brake wheel indicator is flushed with the reference surface if the brake wheel indicator is uh, not protrude and they become flush with the reference okay sorry become not flush with the reference okay so now the brake unit it is an indication that the brake unit is now have a less width less width and the mass is not available and the strength of the brake unit is not available if for example a rejected takeoff is needed so if the brake wheel indicator is not protrude now you need to take an action and the change is a brake unit so again brakes are guaranteed to provide sufficient braking until the brake wheel indicator is flushed with the reference surface flushed with the reference surface if now the uh, brake wheel is now flushed with the surface is not protrude so you need to take an action and the change the brake unit change the brake unit okay everybody so that uh, we have just mentioned is written here now if the indicator is below the reference now you see the indicator is below the reference so the brake disc are too worn now you now satisfy that the brake discs rotor and stator width is now beyond the limit okay and the braking performance can be significantly reduced now this brake unit cannot satisfy a rejected takeoff scenario so now if the brake discs are too worn their width is reduced yes if the brake wheel happen the rotor and the stator that compose the brake unit now their width is less so their mass is less and their strength is less so they cannot be ready to absorb the heat energy that will come due to brake application brake application so this is a picture to unserviceable brake unserviceable brake and insufficient friction uh, is now happening because the brake disc width is now reduced okay so now you see the brake wheel indicator below the reference surface okay is now flushed okay so you as a maintenance personnel or as a pilot you need to take action and change this brake unit change this brake unit
Okay, everybody. Until now, we speak about the break wear phenomena. Break wear phenomena. So, as a result, the piston don't have enough extension to push the discs and create sufficient braking friction to slow down the aircraft. If the width is, is less now, if the width is less now, so the mass is less and strength is less. So during landing, if the pilot apply brake or automatic brake happening, now the piston don't have enough extension to push on the pressure plate and on the brake disc and create sufficient braking friction and now the brake unit will not become a sufficient heat sink uh, unit. Heat sink unit. Okay, everybody. Let's proceed now. Also regarding brake wear, this is a comparison between a serviceable brake and the unserviceable brake. This is serviceable because the wear indicator is protrude, but now the wear indicator is flushed and beyond the limit so it is its width is less than now so this one has high widths you see high widths or big widths but this one is less widths high mass or good mass less mass good strength in a serviceable brake bad strength in unserviceable brake so now in the unserviceable brake, if the brake wear indicator is flush and is below the reference surface, so in addition, if the brake is too worn, the amount of heat sink mass that is available to absorb braking energy is reduced. This is unserviceable because its mass is less. Its mass is less. Not enough mass, not enough strength to absorb the heat energy. Okay, so in the event of a high speed rejected takeoff, this can lead to increased risk of runway overrun or brake fire. If the brake disc is not having enough mass and enough width, and the brake unit may fracture or rupture, a hydraulic leakage may happen and the temperature now is high, so the hydraulic fluid may be auto-ignite and the brake fire and the brake smoke may happening. Brake fire or brake smoke may happen. Okay, everybody. Let's proceed. This is the second phenomena we need to speak, we need to speak about. Brake oxidation. Why is a brake unit oxidized? Because the brake unit is carbon. And with time, this carbon is chemically react with oxygen in the air. So the oxidation rate is a very slow rate in normal circumstance. So during the time, during use of the brake unit, okay, and with a very slow rate, brake unit is oxidized. But for sure, this is not our picture. This is a heavily oxidized brake unit. Heavily oxidized brake unit. You see now that the carbon is becoming like ash, like powder. And the brake unit and the brake disc now is connected to each other. They are not really a good state of rotor and stator. Okay, everybody. So, brake oxidation rate may be increased. And high rate may happening due to two phenomena, temperature and the catalytic oxidation. This oxidized uh, uh, picture, as you can see, this oxidized uh, phase of the brake unit, as you can see, happen due to temperature and catalytic oxidation. So that temperature increase the oxidation rate, yes and catalytic or catalyst increase oxidation rate yes so from where this catalyst come it will come from potassium and sodium in aircraft cleaning agent and aircraft de-icing agent aircraft cleaning fluid and aircraft de-icing fluid contain potassium and sodium 
if this potassium and sodium coming in contact with the break unit, it heavily increases the oxidation rate. It heavily increases the oxidation rate. Okay, so let's briefly describe the break oxidation. So, carbon from the breaks naturally combine with oxygen from the ambient air to become carbon dioxide, CO2. This break unit is a good one and it is not affected by oxidation. This break unit is a bad one. You see here the mid disc suffer from oxidation. Mid disc suffer from oxidation. And you see here this break unit heavily oxidized. And now the outer disc in this picture, we see that the outer disc is heavily oxidized. So what is the difference between this picture and this picture? In this picture, the mid disc is suffer from oxidation. But in this one, the outer discs suffer from oxidation. So there is a difference between these two pictures. And you can see here two different types of oxidation. The one that happened to the mid disc, it is due to probably due to temperature because the mid disc cannot easily ventilate it. So the temperature here allows the mid disc to be heavily oxidized. So, th so this break unit is suffering from thermal oxidation. But on the other side, on this one, as the outer disc heavily oxidized than the mid disc, you see here the mid disc is good. But the outer disc is suffer from oxidation. So now probably this oxidation is due to catalytic oxidation because the potassium and sodium in the cleaning and the icing fluid can easily contact to the outer disc. So with time, the catalytic oxidation happen and the outer disc become like ash and like, uh, uh, like lam lamination or like ash or like powder. Now carbon convert to powder and ashes. Okay, everybody. So again, carbon from the bricks naturally combine with oxygen from the ambient air to become carbon dioxide. This is the, uh, uh, this is the explanation of break oxidation. This rate or this oxidation must happen with a very long time. But two factors affect this oxidation rate. Temperature and the catalytic. They are increased so much the rate of oxidation. Okay, everybody. So, under normal circumstances, the oxidation occur at a very slow rate. This is what I have just said. Under normal circumstances, the oxidation occur at a very slow rate. However, the rate of oxidation can be accelerated by external factors such as high temperature, temperature and catalytic chemical pollution due to sodium and potassium in the cleaning and the de-icing fluids. So always you as a maintenance personnel need to take care about having the cleaning agent or de-icing agent come in contact with the brake unit. Come in contact with the brake unit. Okay, everybody. Let's proceed. So, oxidation result in a loss of carbon mass. You see here the mass is heavily reduced. This result in a loss of carbon mass from the brake disc. Carbon softening, if you need to explain what is oxidation carbon softening and the delamination it can ultimately lead to brake rupture if an affected brake is not changed in due time if a brake is heavily oxidized and you don't change it so when the piston apply power so the disc may fracture easily fracture because now the carbon is soft and the delamination happening and the carbon now is like ash so if brake unit suffer from fracture so now a hydraulic leakage may happen and a brake fire may happen or brake smoke may happen so this is a figure explain the fracture or rupture that happen to a brake unit if an oxidized brake is not changed in due time 
So now if the stator fracture, so the piston may come in contact with the rotor and the piston may suffer from fracture and a leak is happening. Hydraulic leakage happening and come in contact with the brake unit which is very hot will convert into a very bad situation like brake smoke and the brake fire may happen because you know that the auto ignition temperature of the hydraulic fluid is like 400 degree so if the hydraulic fluid reach 400 degrees centigrade and this temperature is normally happen due to brake application so this hydraulic fluid may uh, may auto ignite and a fire may propagate fire may propagate okay everybody so this is the two types of oxidation thermal oxidation and the catalytic oxidation thermal due to temperature high temperature and the catalytic oxidation due to potassium and sodium coming from the cleaning and the de-icing agent these two type of uh, a factor temperature and the catalyst increase so so much the oxidation rate increase so so much the oxidation rate so carbon oxidation due to exposure to high temperature is referred to as thermal oxidation when carbon oxidation is due to the presence of catalyst it is usually referred to as catalytic oxidation so you as a maintenance personnel or as a pilot how you can identify a thermal oxidation and the catalytic oxidation as i said before if the affected disc is a mid disc so it is a thermal oxidation vice versa if the affected disc is the outer disc outer disc so probably it is a catalytic oxidation catalytic oxidation okay everybody so uh, this table is very good show you how the mass is reduced and the strength is heavily reduced how the mass is reduced i'm sorry i will bring it back how the mass is reduced and the strength is heavily reduced due to thermal oxidation and thermal plus catalytic oxidation so for example if the brake temperature is 600 degree the brake unit needs almost 12 day to loss 5 percent of mass or 25 percent of strength if it is suffer only from thermal oxidation this 12 day is heavily reduced to just 45 minutes you see the acceleration very high acceleration 12 day reduced to only 45 minutes if the brake unit suffer from thermal and the catalytic oxidation also if the brake temperature is 700 degree so the brake unit is just in need to 49 minutes to loss 5 percent of mass which is equal 25 percent of strength this 40, 49 minutes will heavily reduce to just four minutes if the brake unit also has sodium or potassium from catalyst okay everybody so from this uh, table you see the bad effect from the catalyst potassium or sodium from the de-icing or cleaning agent it increases the acceleration rate and heavily reduced the time that the brake units need to loss five percent of mass or 25 percent of strength i hope you everybody uh, from this session you clearly identify the two phenomena that may affect the brake unit brake wear and the brake oxidation both are bad phenomena but most of us easily identify the wear but the oxidation need to be identified also as, and if you ever see a heavily oxidized brake unit you need to change it as fast as you can thank you for your good listening and always fly safely and maintain your aircraft very safely this was my aviation nuggets for today it was a short session to clearly identify how the brake unit may be affected Thank you for your good listening and I will meet you again very soon. Bye-bye.